Hey everyone, welcome back to JLEG3D. So today we're gonna to be working on a box project. It was requested by a user to show him how to do specific rounded edges with an angle. So we're gonna start off by, uh, as you can see, using the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle. And let's make that, uh, let's see, mm, let's make it 10 by 20. And then we're gonna go ahead and extrude that out. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this uh, instead of doing the corners first, actually, let's make that five. Uh, because instead of having to draw all those arcs and doing extra work and spending extra time, you could just go in and fill it these edges. And then if you absolutely need uh, those DXF files, make sure you're in the top view for that, by the way, go ahead and delete the first sketch after you deselect everything. And then you go in tools, project, and select the top plane and then choose the bottom plane as a projection plane. Make sure you have sketches on, click done. And then if we hide our body, uh, we can see that we now have those sketches done and prepared for us. We didn't have to do extra work there. So let's go ahead and uh, unhide that again. And this time we actually don't need that sketch. So from this point, let's go to tools and shell, uh, which is over here. Sometimes I get lost a little bit but uh, we're, gonna, we're going to extrude that out by 0.5 in this case. And now we have our little box. And then what's the world without color? Let's go ahead and make it uh, with Valentine's Day approaching, let's make it pinkish, uh, but it's not too pink, a little bit probably red if I can select the right thing there. For some reason it's choosing wrong, but I'm gonna use my finger instead. Uh, there we go. That's a decent enough color for everyone, right? So let's go back to modeling. And then from this point on, I'm going to do something extra special. We're going to show you a box that mates. So let's go to uh, offset edge and we're going to select this. Make sure your loop function is on and we're going to offset that by 0.25, which is exactly half of the wall, right? So now that we have this, we want to extrude that down to about 2.5 millimeters in height. So if we select these two lines, you can see there's a distance of 2.5 millimeters uh, and the line itself is 30, but that's irrelevant at this point. But from this point on, we wanna work with those edges to make him have a custom arc, so to speak. So I'm gonna do two edges here. So we're gonna start off by going into tools, split body, and we select our body and we're gonna use, uh, let's say for starters, we're gonna use the X plane. And if you're wondering what plane we're on right now, if you look up here, on this little box up here, you can see X, Y, and Z. So you know which plane you're on at all times, uh, just FYI. So click done. And then we wanna split it one more time, but instead of doing it one at a time, we select uh, both of these bodies. And then we go to more and then split body. And this time we're going to use the Y plane uh, to split it, okay? Now that we have four pieces, we have an easier time working with these objects. And alternatively, I'll show you another method, but there's an alternative method you could have used instead of splitting it as well that may be easier in some instances. But anyways, let's move this up to about four. So we have a height difference there. And uh, the reason I did that here is because we need to have difference in the edges here. So we couldn't, for example, chamfer this before, right? Now we can because the bodies are separate. But alternatively, let me go ahead and show you up front for those who want to skip my video and go straight to the work. You can draw a line here and a line here and then go and extrude that out simply from that sketch. So let's say it was 2.5. So let's do 1.5 to make it a total of four. So we could do that. And you can also, in this case, do the same thing, go down, let's say by another 1.5. And then in this case, since the body's not split and it's already connected, we don't have to do the union later. So we can kind of skip a step there. So kind of pick your poison as usual, you know, it depends on what you need in the moment. So let's do that. And then we can go ahead and go ahead and um, fill it these to smooth them out. And we can technically either do them both together, but when you do them together, they can't overlap. So you can see it says blends would overlap. So there's a limited number you can do with that. So let's try two for this side. And then for this one, let's do, instead of overlapping them, we're gonna do a long one and then we're going to do another one at the top so see that's the difference if you select them together or if you select them separately you can kind of do different things so as you can see that one is a little bit different because it has that edge see that little edge here that kind of stops it from going further you can delete that edge and that will allow it to be a further 
fill it. So there's just some things to consider. You can do these kinds of interesting designs here. And as you see, I made these different, but you could have also made them the same. Uh, another thing is if you want a slanted edge, you can just go to transform move and then you select this edge and you move the align piece and you can rotate them. For example, if you want it to be a chamfered edge, uh, this is basically like a swept profile. So there's so many options you can do with these types of boxes. But uh, anyways, they're really fun. Uh, let's go ahead and continue. For this edge, I want to go ahead and union our bodies back together so that we can work with them easier. Because now that we have that picked up here, we can go in and uh, fill it this to our heart's content. We can go up to even probably something like 20. And as you can see, it even extended past that edge. So a lot of things can be done if you know exactly what you're doing and exactly what you want, because knowing what you want is a big part of the plan. So let's go ahead and do that one in 15. And I'm just showing you guys this, that you can use different methods to accomplish similar results. So another thing you can do, which is like a not standard thing, you can draw your own profile. So for example, from there to here, we can not only use that one single sketch to extrude and subtract that little piece, and then make sure you go to 0.25, so that's this wall. But you can also use the same sketch to add uh, an, a profile to that. So 0.25 again, and then we just need to tools union. And as you can see, that changes the color, but we can change it back by unioning it. So anyways, that's not really important, the color, the box is more important. But the fact is, you can go ahead and make these boxes to basically any shape you want, as long as you follow the correct process, because Every step has a prioritized um, timing because if you do a specific step first, then other steps will be harder to do later if you do them in the wrong order. So I'm so showing you kind of this is the process of how you get this part done. And then the bonus step after we have basically our general shape complete, let's go ahead and hide those sketches. They're kind of in the way. What we can do now is go to tools, extrude. We're going to select that bottom face since it's flat because we can fill it in the end, right? So you have to say fill it and then for like 99% of the projects. But now we extrude it up. We kind of go uh, subtracting as we go. And then we add one more millimeter. So we have a total of six. Then we go to new body. And then what I want to do before I do the next step is first hide the first body. And then go to tools and shell this by 0.5 just like the first one. So that our box is kind of align in a sense. And now we unhide our first body and we go to tools subtract from the second body go to items menu from the first body and then click done and what this does is basically created an exact opposite of our box so that the profile is actually made perfectly and the only thing is here well first of all try to remember what number you moved up up so you can move it back but i'm going to show you a different method but anyways as you can see here we have a box that aligns here it, from, for one face to the other face. So this is technically a really nice box for 3D printing, other than we didn't uh, account for tolerances, which you should, depending on which printer you're using, right? Because if you 3D print this, it'll be a really tight fit and it might not work out unless you add those tolerances, like I said. But one other thing to note, I made that uh, lid a little bit higher. So we have that inner profile here. And sometimes you may not want that. So one thing you can do is if you go either back or you can go to transform a line, select our body, click next. And then we can select any face over here, basically, as long as it's matching to the other face. And then uh, it aligns it for us if we've moved it, right? So one thing we can do, like I said, go to the front face, top square right here, you click that front, go to section view. And then as you can see, we have this, uh, let's go to sketch mode, first of all. And as you can see, we have this distance here of 0.5 millimeters. So uh, one thing you can do right off the bat to make your life easier is uh, don't select both of these, first of all, because this will basically just squeeze your object, right? What you need to do is go to transform and then select the move rotate tool and then select both of those edges. And then go down that distance of 0 .05, 0 0.5 and that kind of seals the lid so that we have no gap there. And uh, that's basically for whoever wants it. But this is just tips to show you how to do this kind of stuff. And if you really want to see what's going on over there, you can go to uh, visualize after double clicking and we can uh, go ahead and, well, it says multiple there because I selected probably too much. Let's select that default material and then put that transparency to about 20%. Sometimes 50 is enough, but for this case we need 20.
And so as you can see, now we, we see everything transparently and we can see exactly what's going on with all of the body here. So this is very nice and, and simple way to actually understand what's going on with your body, right? And then we kind of have there uh, different colors. So what we want to do is change that to the same transparent one. And that's because, remember, when you did the subtraction, those two faces, they kind of blended together because of the subtract. So that's why that happened. But anyways, you now have this box, right? So this is that final step. Uh, let me actually move that back. This is that final step where you need to do the fillets and transform a line saves you sometimes because you see, instead of having to type in decimals, we could just go ahead and uh, align the edges and that's a really simple way to do it. And so basically you can select this body and do the chamfer and then it selects all the edges there. So sometimes that's not the way you want to do it, but sometimes it is. So 0.25. Now we have a nice rounded lid. So these look really good together. And Valentine's Day is actually coming up. So you can 3D print your uh, loved one, something special, and put it in the box. So this is just FYI if you guys want to do it. But um, this is basically the easiest way to do it. Other, obviously, there's more ways to do arcs on the corners there. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Here at JLake 3 d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.